name is Rich Ruggles, and we're in Port Townsend. I live in Port Townsend. In the background, you see the prototype of the Quickie vehicle, which we are developing. I say we, I have a number of comrades who are involved in this project. We're all volunteers. None of this is getting paid. The inspiration is not commercial. The inspiration is really political and environmental, and the idea is to uh, uh, ward off, ward off global warming to uh, minimize the exploitation of, of fossil fuel. So far it, it's less than five thousand dollars. We are trying very hard to keep the the uh, the investment of money to a minimum and then to prove in a sense to big corporation that small amounts of money can go a long distance in fuel efficient vehicles. Where'd you get five thousand dollars? Out of my pocket. Out of your pocket? <laughs> Out of my pocket. Well, I, my name is Rich Ruggles. I, I have had th three careers, started a couple of companies, have been pretty fortunate in squirreling some money away. Not a massive amount, but more than I need. And so this is an investment of some of that time and money into a, uh, an environmental enterprise. One of the keys to it, fuel efficiency, will be aerodynamics. It's designed from aerodynamic shapes. Uh, it is CAD design, so uh, it's not just a hand-drawn thing. It's, it's uh, science behind the, the shape. Uh, another is lightweight construction. And, uh, and then hybrid, some pretty radical hybrid technology. Uh, for technical people, it's a parallel hybrid, but radically optimized with something like four or five times uh, the horsepower on the electrical side as the internal combustion side. And that means that the internal combustion operate engine, when it is operated, is operating at its sweet spot of highest efficiency of converted liquid fuel into energy. The electrical side of the vehicle provides all of the tr performance you need, hill climbing, acceleration, and that sort of thing, while the internal combustion provides range. So you're not crippled to having just a few miles of range. The objective is to average maybe 200 miles to the gallon and with two gallons of fuel on board you could travel 400 miles before you ran out of fuel or if you wanted to nurse it you could go further than that. This is a prototype. This is not a finished vehicle. The finished vehicle will be have an entirely different body. It will be a composite structure built of fiberglass and carbon reinforced. But the propulsion system, and again this is a propulsion system, the, the internal combustion side of the propulsion system, which is borrowed from a Honda scooter, a late model Honda scooter. It is just 50 cc's, it is water cooled, not air cooled, it is four stroke rather than two stroke, it has a real fast electric start. It is as clean burning a little engine as you can find, but it's not the final solution. In the final solution, it will have a biofuel engine of some sort in the final vehicle. This is the engine room. It sits in that area. The next thing to go in the engine room, and like 75 or 80 percent of the horsepower for the vehicle will come from an, will come from uh, an electric motor. An AC for technical people, it's an AC induction motor. Uh, and an elaborate controller which will give the vehicle a lot of efficiency through a wide range of operating conditions. And it will do regenerative braking to uh, restore as much energy as possible back to the battery. The batteries will be saddlebagged into the uh, just ahead of on either side and these batteries will be fairly small. These batteries will be fairly small because all of the long range will come from the liquid fuel in the internal combustion. The, the uh, electric motor provides acceleration and hill climbing and reverse and vehicle launch and, and the internal combustion provides long range. So if you need to go 100 miles or 200 miles or maybe even 300 miles, you can do that without having to plug in and recharge. The vehicle will be able to use for short trips, pure electric, for very long trips, of course, it's a hybrid. But the goal is immediately is to uh, crawl before we run, and the idea is to prove all of this out off the freeway and uh, speed limits up to 50 mile an hour.
It'd be very easy to make this vehicle go fast, and but that we will do later after we pour a lot more engineering into it and build a lot more safety features into it and to make it uh, much safer for the freeway environment. We expect to be driving this prototype around uh, by the end of the summer. Uh, and then, this is all volunteers, there's no paychecks being written, and so people donate their time and it's difficult to schedule a project unless you're paying people fat paychecks to keep them sitting at their desk. So this project will happen over time without a schedule. The idea is to develop this with talent and volunteer time rather than just brute force of money. And, and uh, I expect that this will be on the road as a prototype before ten or twelve thousand dollars have been spent. That's coming out of your pocket? That's coming out of my pocket. Most no, of no, None of the other volunteers are kicking in? Money. They're kicking in things that's more valuable. That's time and talent, you know. that. Uh, uh, the other partners, you know, and his background is electrical engineering, computers, and uh, and manufacturing engineering. Uh, my background, systems engineering, high-tech aerospace, physics, and electronics and computers. Steve Taylor is uh, a fabricator uh, who's excellent. He's built race cars, so he knows a lot about the practicality. Steve Tucker, his education is biology, but his experience is in auto mechanics, and he's incredibly good at that. David Vose is a boat builder and a CAD designer. We've got other people involved with the project who are electrical engineers, and uh, one other fellow who's just joining the project is, uh, uh, is an MBA in sustainable sustainability. The website is www.fev-now.com. What does that stand for? Uh, fuel efficient vehicles now. <laughs> the add to now is kind of an imperative. It's something we need to do now, not 20 years from now. While I'm not doing this as a commercial enterprise, nothing would delight me more than to have other people uh, uh, borrow some of this technology, uh, take up bits and pieces of it, uh, and turn it into commercial. I'd love to see it evolve as a community effort or a regional effort. And I'm opening the door for other people to join the development team. There are other talents that we need. Right now, there's no, we don't have our hands out looking for money, but as we go through second and third iterations, we might be looking for some uh, donations or venture capital. But again, short steps, small steps first, and we're trying to sort of show the way that can be done on limited budget and volunteer work and try to prove to people that they don't need to wait until big corporations come along and solve the problem. That, that you can do some of this yourself within your own community. And Port Townsend's a perfect place for that. It's more of a social issue than a technological issue. And Port Townsend's a perfect incubator town full of talent full of technical talent, but also full of people who are not constrained by convention and who will accept alternate technology and will go the different direction. So that's the goal. You're watching 4-H Network News. Visit us at 4-hnews.blogspot.com. <laughs>